Hello, PodBods. This podcast is about what sort of things can be said to be true or false. That is, the nature of the bearers or vehicles of truth. The question of what sort of things bear or carry truth is important because of the ubiquity of truth. No sane person possessed of a desire to avoid ruin can afford to dismiss truth as unimportant. Wherever one seeks it, the issue of what it is that bears truth will inevitably contribute to how one cashes out one's acknowledgement of its importance. The historical lines in the debate about truth bearers are drawn very roughly between those who lean towards the bearers of truth being found in the use of language, for example Quine and the later Wittgenstein, and those who lean towards their being found in what the language is about, for example early Wittgenstein or Russell. That is between those who assert that the bearing of truth is a semantic endeavour and those who assert that it is a metaphysical one. For the record, I belong to the former use of language camp. Unfortunately, literature in this field is notoriously confusing. Philosophers have not been consistent in their use of terms like sentence, statement or proposition. This has resulted in confusion as to whether putative truth bearers transcend their use in language or not. In the hope of avoiding any further contribution to this mess, I'll proceed with my assumption and definitions as someone who thinks truth bearers need not transcend language. I shall assume here that truth obeys the classical principles, non-contradiction and excluded middle. This shouldn't be taken as an implicit dismissal on my part of all non-classical logics, just as a desire to maintain focus on my purposes here. A truth bearer then is something that is either true or false, not neither and not both. I shall also assume, for reasons I'll go into when I explore the issue of verification, that an explicit reference to reality is not necessary for truth. Finally, I assume that the existence of language using agents is not an ontological problem. In the context of these assumptions, the questions I want to answer is, what sort of things are truth bearers? What sort of things carry truth? Put simply, my answer is statements. Statements being meaningful and declarative arrangements of words. Meaningful in that they can be understood by competent users of the ordinary language in which they are issued. An ordinary language being one that has developed, like English or Standard Chinese, through everyday use by ordinary folk, rather than being cooked up by boffins. An arrangement of words is declarative when it's neither an exclamation nor a question, that is, when it asserts or declares something, rather than asking for something, commanding or merely blurting out words. A useful rule of thumb for working out whether a particular arrangement of words is declarative or not is that an arrangement of words is declarative when it makes sense to prefix it with it is true that or postfix it with is true. And it is not declarative when it doesn't make sense to do so as in it's true that is the catting on the mat or ugh is true. So On this account, a statement is an arrangement of words that declares or asserts something, and which can be understood by competent users of the natural language in which it occurs. I claim that these things are the primary truth bearers. Now, I don't deny that truth as a property is often attributed to other entities besides statements, beliefs, facts, intuitive axioms, or mind-independent states of affairs, for example. I do insist, however, that the truth of anything that is not a statement is secondary, depending, as it does, on truth-bearing statements. It is statements, therefore, that are, in my view, the primary bearers of truth. So, for everything that's not a statement, be it a belief, an intuition, or a box of bananas, there is no possible situation in which it bears truth, but has not been expressed via a truth-bearing statement. Expression via a truth-bearing statement is necessary for anything that's not a statement being a truth-bearer. And being a truth-bearing non-statement is sufficient for having been expressed previously by a truth-bearing statement. The property of being a truth-bearer, when found to apply to something that is not a statement, must therefore be derived from the truth-bearing properties of some meaningful and declarative arrangement of words. 
This conception of statements as the primary bearers of truth is particularly beneficial to methodological naturalists, that is, to those like me who prioritise the means of the empirical natural sciences in the pursuit of knowledge over, for example, those interpretive and ideologically motivated means preferred by some activists in the humanities or the socio-political sciences. Not surprisingly, then, there are many who, in sensing the threat, object to the idea of statements as primary truth-bearers. Now, the strongest, and indeed the most common, objection to the primacy of statements as truth-bearers takes the form of a dilemma. The first premise is a conjunction of conditionals. It joins together two conditional statements. The first conditional statement is that if every truth bearer is a token statement, that is a particular thing in space and time that belongs to a type, then truth is context dependent and there are unstatable truths. And it joins this with the second conjunction that if every truth bearer is a statement type, that is an abstract category to which tokens belong, but it is not itself located in space and time, then truth is not context dependent and there are self-contradictory truth bearers. The second premise is the disjunctive premise, which claims that at least one of the antecedents from the two previous conditionals is true, so that either every truth bearer is a token statement or every truth bearer is a statement type. So from this second premise and the first premise, the inference is drawn that uh, either truth is context dependent and there are unstatable truths, or truth is not context dependent and there are self-contradictory truth bearers. Now clearly this wouldn't do because in the first case there are clearly truths that are not relative to when and where they are stated. And because truth bearers that leave truths unborn are clearly inadequate. Whilst in the second case, because there are clearly truths that are relative to when and where they are said, and because things that violate the laws of non contradiction cannot, by the definition I'm using, be truth bearers. Thus, if this argument is cogent, statements cannot be truth bearers, and I am wrong. Ah, but I have a reply, or at least Quine had a reply. So where a token use of a statement is a deployment of a particular arrangement of words in the relevant ordinary language about anything other than that language itself, an occurrence is someone somewhere at some point mentioning some part of a type, an instance is that part, and a statement is non-indexical when its truth is independent of where and when it's said and who said it, then by claiming that for every statement S, S is a truth bearer if and only if S is a token use or S is an occurrence of type T and for every instance of T, T is not indexical, I can falsify the second premise of the metaphysician's dilemma and ward off self-contradiction, which is typically indexical, I thereby remain at liberty, despite my opponent's best shot, to advocate for statements as the primary truth bearers. A position that, it turns out, has powerful implications for the application of methodological naturalism in general, including to socio-political research, which is what has recently drawn my attention back to it. So suck it up, anti-posies. Thank you for listening. <laughs>